Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Page Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. V. S. Ganesh, Managing Director, Page Industries Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us in our evening uh, earnings call today evening. I'm joined by our CFO, Mr. Deepanchan, and our CEO, Mr. Gagan Segal. I hope you have already seen our press release and the There research. are more than 20 parties in the conference. Before we dive into the numbers and specifics, I would like to provide a context and an overview of the quarter that has just concluded. In a time characterized by significant challenges, I am pleased to share that the company has exhibited some remarkable tenacity. Q1 witnessed a sequential revenue growth of 28% and a volume growth of 31%. However, as you know, macro headwinds and market conditions did pose some challenges leading to slight We have lost the connection for Mr. Ganesh. Please stay connected. We will stay connected. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for Mr. V.S. Ganesh connected. Sir, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, and apologize for that uh, call drop. Hope you can hear me loud and clear. So, you know, I was just saying, you know, d during this quarter, the macro headwinds and market conditions did pose some challenges, leading to a slight year-on-year -year degrowth, reflected in a 7.5% decline in revenue and an 11.5% decline in volume compared to Q1 of the previous year. The prevailing demand remi remains subdued due to several factors aligning with the anticipated expectations, which contributed to lower sales volumes. It is worth mentioning that our industry has witnessed an accumulation of excess inventory which has had repercussions on the overall ecosystem, resulting in certain unsustainable business practices which is happening in the marketplace. Our brand's growth strategy are deliberately designed to ensure sustainable long-term growth while upholding sound financial health and maintaining the integrity of our brand identity. To navigate the temporary phase of market conditions, we have taken enough measures to safeguard and improve our market share. Additionally, a diligent control over expenses has been instituted to protect our margins. Speaking of some of the key updates for the quarter, our EBITDA margins witness sequential improvement, which is attributed to lower product cost and better overhead absorption. While we have taken several measures to control operating expenses, I would like to highlight that the high EBITDA margin in Q1 FI23 was a result of the higher revenue recorded during the, that period. Our distribution network expansion remains in line with our plans. As of end of June, we have extended our presence to over 120,000 plus MBOs, 1,330 EBOs, and 2,800 plus LFS outlets. We are strategically directing our attention towards Metro and Tier 2 and 3 cities while keenly gauging the potential pin codes for expansion. 
It's heartening to note that our e-commerce channel witnessed substantial growth of 43%, reflecting evolving consumer purchasing habits and our commitment to bolstering our online presence. I'm sure you must be wanting to know our progress on the ARS implementation. I'm delighted to state that the implementation has been making significant progress and has been strengthened for extensive adoption. While demand continues to be subdued, we remain steadfast in our conviction that this is merely a transient phase. Our proactive approach involves continued investment in shaping the future, thereby ensuring that we capitalize on the promising prospects that lie ahead of us. Our strategic focus continues on multiple fronts through intensifying general trade distribution, expanding modern trade and exclusive brand outlets, growing our D2C business, improving our customer experience, strengthening our product portfolio, and consumer engagement, which will go very hand-in-hand uh, -hand with building brand building and ensuring a very robust supply chain. I will now let our CFO, Mr. Deepanjan, to give you a detailed view on our financial performance, after which we will be happy to take your questions. Let me thank you once again for joining the call today. Deepanjan, over to you. Thank you, VSG. So, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are keeping well. So, thank you for your participation in this evening. I am pleased to report that Page Industries has delivered a reasonable performance in Q1 despite the current market challenges. We have successfully improved our margins by enhancing the qualitative aspects of our inventory. Let me begin by break, breaking down our quarter's performance. Q1 revenue stood at 12,400 million rupees, a growth of 28% quarter on quarter, and a degrowth of 7.5% year on year. Volumes were 55.8 million, which was a growth of 31% quarter on quarter, and a big growth of 11.5% year on year. Q1 EBITDA was rupees 2,438 million, which was a growth of 80% quarter on quarter, and a big growth of 19% year on year. The Q1 EBITDA margins were at 19.6%, which has grown by 5.6% quarter on quarter, largely due to RM cost softening and operational expenses optimization. Q1 FI23 EBITDA margins were higher at 22.2% due to higher sales and better cost absorption. Q1 PAT, we were at 1,584 million rupees, a growth of 102% over a sequential quarter, and a growth of 23.5% year on year. Q1 PAT margin was around 12.8%, as against 15.4% in Q1 FI23. Inventory was rupees 14,321 million as on uh, quarter end, as against rupees 15,921 million uh, in the end of Q4 FI23, uh, which was around 105 days at the end of June versus 154 uh, days in uh, quarter 4 FI23, uh, which is in line with our tar annual target of optimizing the inventory base. Networking capital was Rupees 8,470 million at Q4, Q1 FI24, as compared to 7,710 million at the end of Q4 FI23. Working capital base uh, is at 58, which was around 73 days in, at the end of Q4 23. So, to summarize our financial performance, so despite the challenging demand contractions, Q1 FI24 focused our agility in navigating demand challenges and capitalizing on growth opportunities. Our EBITDA performance highlights our commitment to operational efficiency and prudent cost management amidst the demand fluctuations. With this, we can open the floor to any further questions that we may have. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations on this performance. Uh, sir, I wanted to kind of understand the volume trend. Would you envisage that volume weakness is bottom up now in this quarter and that we should probably turn maybe positive next quarter or how do we how do we kind of see this as we go forward would you know, any you know indication or guidance on how should we look at this would be very helpful sir uh, yes mr mehta thank you uh, yes as regards volume uh, we if i look at the last few weeks we are seeing some improvement but i see the early days it all we have to keenly watch how the festive period is. We are very, very optimistic that this festive season will be buoyant. Last year was not all that buoyant. So mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing some uptick, but it's too early for us to give you a guidance or tell you very, very clearly that things are wrong, though we are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. And so when you say festive demand, that would be more a third quarter phenomena. Is that how I should understand it that is so you know what we had said look for more from the second half from a demand recovery is that what i will i should read or maybe you could kind of un i am not really sure of a new festive is it 2q or 3q that it plays into yeah so basically when we as to of course um, we are looking at diwali which is the main main season and that's what we are looking at and of course, they are also regional now. In Kerala now, the Onam is going to kickstart, and I think it is, this is the time for Kerala. So mm -hmm. it will start in a phase manner in all these states, but mainly Diwali, as you said. And uh, so we are seeing you already some some improvements, but it all depends on how long this trajectory, uh, the upswing, can continue. We need to keep a close watch because the market seems to be very volatile. So I will say the demand is continues to be subdued, and we need to keep having a close watch. Got it, sir. Got it fairly clear. So the second bit on the margin side, I mean, last quarter you had given an expectation of moving to 20 21% in second half. Now, post this performance, would you look to upgrade that guidance? And uh, if you could also give us some sense on which line items in the other expenses have you focused on primarily, which have helped drive this margin improvement? Yeah, so, uh, Mr. Mehta, we, we have always been comfortable between 19 to 21% EBITDA. And uh, uh, even when we look at all our interventions, uh, we always try and maintain this margin. We are happy with that margin. Uh, we don't want to tighten too much on the need to have expenses. We need to also look after the brand and its long-term prospect. So the short-term challenges apart, we need to invest for the future. So we always are comfortable with the 19-21% range. Now, coming to the areas which we are concentrating on to, to control, mainly we are looking at how we can bring the inventory down, and uh, there has been tremendous progress in this trend, and we'll continue to work very hard on that trend. Our overheads, they are really tightened our belts, and our overheads are well under control, and we are looking at every rupee spent, whether it is necessary or not, and that is something we are looking at. We will continue to be people-friendly. We will continue to look after our associates, so we will not take those actions but we will be making sure that the expenses are under control. From a cash flow point of view, again, whatever capex that can be postponed, we are postponing it so that we are in a comfortable position because we also blessed with a very good inventory health now. So there is nothing to panic on that front, and there is no need to have an accelerated expansion plan. So we are working very closely based on the demand, we are synchronizing our capacities. Perfect, sir. Perfect. And if with your permission, just the last bit, any 
indication, would it be fair to say ARS impact is more or less done now? Or Absolutely. Do you have to touch it? ARS impact is more or less done because, see, uh, last time when I told you that there is a temporary connect correction in inventory because inventory was bloated at that time. Hmm. So we have gone through that phase. So there is absolutely nothing to worry as far as ARS coming in the way of our sales numbers. Okay, so it's just a demand thing now, and that you're saying let's just wait and watch. I want to be perfect. Okay, perfect. Perfect, sir. I'll come back in the queue for the other question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neta. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ravi Naredi from Naredi Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, we, Ganesh, really in tough situation, you have tried your best to give the result. Sir, June quarter is highest for company, but it down year to year 7.5% in top line. Profit after tax down 23.6%. So, uh, our old stock of raw material and uh, fabric has been wiped out or still we are having. And what you learn from this lesson, we are maintaining high inventory of raw material and everything. Okay. So, Reddy, uh, thanks. Uh, very good question. Actually, uh, Q1, when you look at it compared to last, last quarter, last quarter Q1 was our historically high quarter. We, never in our history we had that kind of a quarter. I can say it was partly abnormal because of the, the supply chain um, uh, disruptions which we had and there was uh, a, a send up demand, there was revenge shopping happening. So you can't compare that quarter with this quarter from a baseline point of view. So uh, that apart, you know, when the inventory side, you know, uh, hindsight, we can say the inventory is very high. But if you see last year, uh, previous year Q4 and Q1, Q2 of last year, we did exceedingly well and none of us were able to predict how long this is going to continue. These were very, very buoyant. And uh, I can say compared to overall what is happening in the industry, we have done much better. We have less than 100 days inventory as the points in showed our inventory levels are well under control now. And I can see many of our peer companies have even 8 to 12 months of inventory. And that's why we are seeing a lot of interventions happening in the market by way of discountings and schemes and other things. Luckily, we had always had that prudence and much better control over supply chain. So we didn't get pushed to that extent. Right, right. Uh, and sir, my one more observation. Uh, as we use all jockey products since last so many years, we find that cost of products are very much uh, expensive now. So we face intense comp uh, competition. Is it so? Uh, our commitment to being a value for money brand remains unwavering. And this is deeply ingrained in our core pricing strategy. Uh, what we are doing is we are we are elevating the quality and features of our product and thereby we are offering enhanced value for the price paid. So okay. we always looked at how we can strike a right balance between quality and affordability. So you know what if you if you see our products you you see we have upgraded our products. We may not have reduced price, but from a value for money proposition uh, there are we we have really enhanced our product and that's what you will see in the market yes we can say really fantastic and when all expansion of company will complete including odisha odisha uh, project uh, will be hand over to operations by q4 of this year and then then we will be starting off with trial production and then going for commercial production. Okay. And the rest of the production, which you are the rest of the expansion which you are doing in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu? Uh, there is 
no much work in progress as far as um, uh, expansions are concerned. The the Karnataka plants are already in operation, which we said last year, last quarter, if you remember, we said, you know, it is it's starting operation. So a last week unit is now operational. And our immense dinnerware in Hassan is also fully operational now. Okay. okay. All the best, sir. You are really doing Thank great. Thank you so much. Very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity uh, and, and congrats on a good set of numbers and difficult environment. Uh, so, uh, first uh, question is, uh, with the distribution reforms behind us, uh, what are the key growth uh, drivers leadership team is focusing on in near and medium term to revive growth and, and gain market share? Okay. So, Tejas, uh, uh, as far as distribution uh, is concerned, it is, it is work in progress. You know, we, they are, our distributors are getting into auto replenishment system in a phased manner, So, but it is progressing very well. And uh, as I told you before, there is no no impact to sales now. We have crossed that bridge. Coming to our strategy, long-term for growth, first and foremost is intensifying general trade distribution. We are committed to amplifying our reach within the general trade distribution channel ensuring that our products are readily accessible to a wider rate consumer base. So the risk is the most important thing. And we continue to expand modern trade and exclusive brand outlets. Uh, we have made significant stride in modern trade expansion with a particular emphasis on rapidly growing our network in exclusive brand outlets. This approach aligns with the mission to provide premium shopping experience to our customers and to do justice to our entire product range. One other area where we are giving disproportionate attention is in growing the D2C business. Uh, we, we all know this is the, the most important space uh, which is having the highest growth traction and uh, we are dedicated to nurturing our D2C business segment. The, the next area which we are looking at is on improving customer experience. We have made tremendous progress in the last few months, a few quarters, and we will continue to concentrate there. Or central to our strategy is enhancing the overall customer experience. And then we, we have been strengthening our product portfolio, and our endeavors are geared towards Further enhancing our product portfolio, catering to a diverse range of consumer preference and needs across the price points and the no white space. Sure. Um, and of sure. course, brand building initiatives uh, to grow the awareness, interest, and desire for the brand in their respective categories is something which we are now looking at, and we are no longer media dark, which we were during the pandemic. So this is where, as I told you before, we don't want to cut costs where it matters. We definitely want to spend where it's required so that uh, the long term of the business is in good hands, and our long term outlook is so positive that we, you know, it is very important that. We, we are very aggressive in the marketplace. Of course, there is a lot of work happening in, in further strengthening our supply chain. This has always been our strength, but there is, there is no end to continuous improvement, and we are taking a lot of action in further improving our supply chain and make it much more robust. Sure. Very clear, sir. And the so second and last question, uh, uh, among the four categories, uh, men's, women, athleisure, and kids, uh, which categories or, or uh, if you can give us some qualitative ranking on uh, which categories are growing above company's average growth rate and which are kind of uh, uh, relatively struggling to grow uh, 
or or keep the or take the averages up yeah so uh there is where what we can see is the men's premium category is having a good growth comparative to all other these that showing a much higher growth at uh, action um and uh, the the area which which is going through a flux across across industry is at this side uh again this is a temporary phase and um, we discussed about it in last quarter also and uh, but if you look at overall overall uh the evolving lifestyle needs of the consumer and the market has shifted more towards a fashion everyday wear especially post covid our confidence in this is deeply rooted in growing this this category so you know this is a short term thing as what we seen at this side but uh, men's premium is to answer your question is the one which is growing better uh, faster than all others i think thanks a lot sir and all the best for coming quarters thank you thank you next question is from the la- of nihal mahesh jam from nuama please go ahead thank you so much and good evening to the management so two questions first is if you could just give the ballpark uh, inventory number i know you mentioned 100 days but the absolute inventory number at the end of q1 so uh, absolute inventory number was rupees 14321 million at the end of q1 that is helpful and then when you mention about these unsustainable business practices uh, is it more in terms of incentives or aggressive discounting on the pricing by the competitors just if you could give a little more color that would be helpful uh it it's actually both you know if you uh, if you go to the market you will see except us a few of us almost all the brands are having uh offers promotions uh, you know buy one get one free or more and uh, when when i look at retailers there are a lot of schemes which are happening which which are if you look at it from a bottom line point of view these are not uh, sustainable and it's it's not a bit of uh, bottom line friendly uh, in a way i can say this is uh, this is a way of liquidating the stock and bringing the inventory down so that is what is happening in the marketplace uh, so that is what we meant by and sustainable business practices and of course we as a brand we we work in a very hygienic focus sustainable growth in shaders is what we take so while we are making sure our partners are happy and uh, and uh, this is where ar is really helping our distributors because they are the inventory turns are improving and this is much better than any scheme for incentives which we can give or retailers are getting better products or consumers are able to uh discover more product ranges of ours so we will continue to focus on these aspects which will bring in sustainable growth so as i said one question if i may that when i say look at how your reviews are shaping up is there a thought for jockey as a brand to go beyond at least and become a full fledged apparel brand we had a certain jeans excuse also that uh, you know we had discussed about if you could just comment on that neha like i didn't get the last part of the question if you can repeat it once again please yes mr ganesh i was asking that while jockey has expanded very well into the athleisure space is there a thought to make it into a full fledged apparel brand just based on observations of some of her ebos and also some sq launches of jeans and some other product categories which are beyond athleisure by definition okay so we have the two parts to this question you know if you see your ebos it's not athleisure it is house of jockey we have presence across a range uh, men's innerwear women's innerwear women's outerwear men's outerwear and juniors so this is an entire product category. we have to offer today and uh, when it comes to adjacencies we only look at adjacencies which are relevant to the brand signature uh, which is relevant to jockey and how we are positioned so we don't see ourselves coming with something like denim or something because that will confuse the mind of the consumers 
And uh, today, uh, there is a there is good clarity among our consumers as to what Jockey stands for, and our adjacencies or the expansions would be in line with the brand signature. Sure, Mr. Gates. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sheila Rati from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to repeat to one of the earlier questions in terms of, uh, you know, the category trends uh, where you talked about men's premium growing faster, whereas, you know, at leisure there are certain issues. Now, you know, talking about the uh, festival season, how do you plan to, uh, you know, have the inventory in place uh, in, in anticipation of the demand which we expect to be strong in the, you know, third quarter onwards? Well, uh, our distributor inventory health is very, very healthy. And uh, we, with, with a good adoption of ARS, they also have a wide representation of our product range. We also are back with good inventories in our warehouses. So if there is an uptick in demand, we are well positioned to cater to those requirements. And we have also taken enough and more initiatives in the back end as far as agility is concerned. So today we have made tremendous progress in turning around the order to shipment as far as back end is concerned. So with all this in place, uh, we we will be the first to make use of uh, the opportunity when the market bounces back. And we are on a sequential basis also seeing uh, that changing, right? That is, you know, demand is improving for us in general. Absolutely, yes. So my uh, second question was, uh, you know, on the gross margins. Uh, why is there a dip on the gross margins this quarter? Departing, you want to take that? Yes. So uh, for the dip in the gross margin, as we compare with uh, Q1 to 23. So the, this has been several factors. Firstly, the prevailing demand has been subdued. And as uh, VSG explained, we had the highest sales in a quarter in the previous uh, year. So it was the highest ever sales. So naturally, with the high sales, our uh, overhead optimizations were much better last year. I mean, last year, and yes, with that, uh, the margins that were reported last year were quite high. Uh, at the same time, he has, uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you are. Sir. Okay. Uh, at the same time, as, uh, as we explained, there are uh, situations in the market where the inventory is excess, and uh, there are uh, promotional activities given by other competitors, which, uh, which has impacted uh, our sales uh, turnovers. And we continue to focus on the long-term sustainable growth. So to navigate this temporary phase of marketing conditions, we have taken measures to safeguard and improve our market share. Additionally, we have taken steps for controlling our expenses and optimizing them. So uh, this is broadly the broadly the reason is that yes, uh, when we look at one in five twenty three, the sales were significantly higher, and that helped in optimizing the cost. Current quarter, when we look at it, and naturally since the sales were much higher in that quarter, we had less investments in advertisement and less investment in other sales initiatives. Uh, this year, uh, we have resumed the advertisement, and that has impacted our margin process. But yes, I mean, if you look at the sequential margin, yes, we have improved significantly. So we have increased almost 5.6% as compared to the Q4 uh, FI23. Yeah, so, so if I could uh, a follow up here, uh, why is there a sequential dip in the gross margins? Uh, we Our gross no, margins in March quarter was 56.6, and now we are at 52.9. No, when we are looking at, when we are commenting on gross margin, which is the overall uh, operating margin. So uh, at operating margin level, I think uh, Q4, uh, Q4 we are at 13%, and now we are at 19%. So that's the improvement of 5% and all. Uh, if you look at uh, gross margin perspective, I think between the two quarters, considering we look at gross margin based on our uh, product cost plus conversion charges, so considering that, we are more or less uh, at the same level as we put. And what is that number? 
the gross margin number as per your calculation? So as per our calculations, uh, we are at a gross margin level of uh, one minute. Yeah, we are at around 53 percent. And, and that is a comparable comparable number for the last quarter also. Yes. Understood. Uh, and my final question, sir, uh, was respect to the distributor count. Uh, for last couple of quarters, what we have observed is that the number has been coming lower uh, versus, you know, 4,800 earlier. Now we are at 4,000. Uh, is there any particular reason why this has been lower? Well, uh, the, um, Gagana will be able to answer this, but just to tell you, some of this is also some consolidation happening, especially on the accessories distributor distribution. There is realignment happening. So these are all designed. Uh, actually, there is no distributor attrition, per se. In fact, it has only strengthened, and I, I feel this will further improve with ARS coming in. I can already see excitement in our distributors, the way they're shaping up. So we don't have any such worries, uh, but I think Gagan can add more value to this point. Gagan? Uh, thank you, Mr. VSG. Uh, uh, I think you've answered it. Uh, we don't really see a decrease as such in the distributor count because when you look at the unique distributors, uh, currently, you know, in, uh, we used to have around 1350 distributors a couple of years back and currently we have 1736 unique channel partners. Yes, there is a bit of consolidation wherein, uh, you know, um, uh, if any channel partner for any reason, say, would have exited at any point of time, so the, which is a normal attrition, right, uh, which is which is not more than what we expect, uh, you know, the first right of uh, uh, refusal is given to existing distributors. So we are consolidating and making sure that our existing distributors, uh, you know, they, they, they continue to grow. And at the same time, as we have created another, uh, you know, um, vertical for accessories, as Mr. Ganesh has rightly mentioned, uh, you know, we want the right kind of channel partners who should invest in us because we see a lot of potential in, in accessories. Uh, so that's a uh, consolidation that has been done from our side uh, by design. You know, so, so that you should have bigger channel partners who can give you the adequate investment and manpower so that we can create accessories as another vertical and continue to grow because we see huge opportunity there. So there is no cause of concern in terms of any attrition. It's all in control. Uh, and we are keeping a very close eye because our channel partners are our primary customers and, uh, you know, we, we continue to engage with them very, very closely. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rishi Modi from Marcellus Investment Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. So my first question is to Mr. VSG. Um, so, so we seen, uh, could you just quantify the impact of ARS in this quarter? How much of secondary sales, which is not being recorded in our primary sales, um, or just the volume which has actually happened at end consumer level versus what is being recorded in our books. Mr. Modi, as I told you uh, some time back as well, uh, we don't have any impact on primaries or secondaries because of ARS. That, that was an issue which we had in Q4 because of the bloated inventory which the distribution had. So now our secondaries and primaries uh, are in line. So our secondary sales has declined by... 9%, 8% is what you're suggesting, right? Like we, are not, we haven't taken many price hikes. We haven't done anything different this year, this quarter around, and hence the actual numbers have started reflecting. Yeah, yeah our, our secondaries are in line with our primaries, and uh, therefore, you know, if you look at it from a growth point of view, what you said is right, and that is that is Understandable because uh, the market is not buoyant; it's sluggish. Okay. Okay. And and we should also compare against the high base of last year Q1, which was abnormally high. If you look at it from a baseline point of view. Right. Right. I understand. And uh, my second question is in the absolute decrease in employee cost. I think you were saying something, but I just couldn't wrap my head around it. If you could explain. Uh, how has this decreased in an absolute term amount? 
We, as we so, have said by inventory, we have been allowing normal attrition. There's, as a company, even during pandemic and even today, we never have forced attrition. You know, that is, the, that's the principle with which we work, and uh, we are a very people-centric company. But uh, last few quarters, since the inventory has been high and uh, uh, there is a need to manage inventory, we have been allowing normal attrition. And that has helped us to bring the cost down. And like, so basically, you're saying that we are under investing in our people. We are not replacing people who have left. So, which like, wouldn't this threaten our long-term business capabilities, business strength? Uh, it it will not because uh, we see uh, since we have very healthy inventory, when we see uptick happening and when we see the trajectory, we can always get time to do the course correction. We can build that capacity. And, uh, you know, Odisha is a virgin place. You know, it's a green field. Uh, so for us, we it's a question of timing as to when we have to start recruitments there. That has nothing to do with our current operating plans. And thirdly, we have enough muscle in outsourcing now. You know, if yeah. If you want to double the capacity there, we can do it. That is the that's the kind of relationship which we have built with our outsourcing and the partners. So we don't have any worries as far as um, uh, seizing the opportunity is concerned when the when the demand bounces back. So this attrition has largely come on the um, labor front, not the corporate front. Is that correct for me to understand? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't get to you. This is on the factory side that the attrition has come in and you haven't replaced, while the corporate uh, employee count is not, it's being replaced adequately. Is that a correct read on this? It is mostly on the operating side because that is where there is no pressure. There is, you know, we need to manage our capacity. In fact, when it comes to sales, uh, feet on the ground, Based on a distribution expansion, we have been adding people. So as I told you some time back, our approach on cost control is measured. Wherever it is required for the growth of the business, we are not holding back. We are making the right investment. And wherever we can tighten our belt, we are tightening it. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's it from my end. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for uh, taking my question and congrats on a good marketing performance in Q1. <coughs> sir, uh, if I understood it correctly, uh, you said you did better than peers in Q1 uh, despite them uh, giving higher incentives and discounts uh, to the trade channel. Uh, so, wanted to check, uh, is this comment at the volume growth level or at the EBITDA level that you are mentioning? Uh, Mr. Bansal, what I I said was uh, we did better than uh, uh, the peers as far as inventory management is concerned. We, you know, we we have 105 days of inventory compared to nine to 12 months of inventory, which the competition or the peers brands. Have. That is what has actually pushed those brands to take certain action on the marketplace, which may not be sustainable. So, luckily, we as a brand are not push to that wall. That's what I, I meant. Uh, Got it. And sir, a quick follow-up to this. Do you expect this to continue for another two quarters since they are having like 10, 12 months of inventory? So that uh, sort of incentives or uh, higher margins can continue for another couple of quarters from the competition perspective? Uh, it can, but if you see the sequential growth, despite all that what is happening in the marketplace, if you see our performance compared to last quarter to this quarter, there is tremendous growth. And, you know, end of the day, this is determined by the end consumer. If he is loyal to your brand, he will continue to buy your product as long as we are value for money. And the last quarter's growth clearly shows we are not outpriced ourselves. And therefore, we, we are not worried about it. Uh, and uh, we, we, you know, the last quarter to this quarter, sequential growth is a good indicator of how things are heading. Got it, sir. 
and typically uh, after q1 has always been a strong quarter for us and then uh, we see a sequential decline for all the three quarters so uh, uh, that trend should continue this year or uh, you expect demand sort of picking up and uh, that trend can reverse this time around uh see it depends fully on the market you know uh, generally you know the market needs to pick up you know if anybody is that so we hope you know this can't last for so long and things should bounce back and that's where we see there to be uptake because this has been two three quarters of stagnation and how long can it last right. last question from my end uh, if you could call out the advertisement expenses that we did in Q4 FY23 and Q1 FY24 as a percentage of sales this didn't get you uh, mr bansar I'm asking if you can call out the advertisement marketing spend that we did in Q4 FY23 and Q1 FY24 as a percentage of sales. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So advertisement was around the 1.9 percent, around 2 percent in Q4 FY23, and in FY24, Q1 FY24, it's around 2.5 percent. so this has in key right so sir uh, this so this is a 600 bits uh, sort of gain that we have done in the operating cost uh, since you mentioned that gross margins are largely stable so can you help us sort of better understand this such a strong improvement uh, i think is it largely because of this attrition thing or we have taken some more initiative uh, sorry can you repeat the question I'm saying uh, advertisement expenses have increased on a sequential basis. Uh, so yes. the improvement in other operating expenses is almost like 600 basis points. Uh, mm-hmm. You mentioned that um, uh, we have done some. Uh, uh, we are uh, not doing replacement. So is it the only reason, or we have cut some other expenses as well? Nice yes. combination of. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's a combination of several things. First of all, uh, our uh, softening of the RM prices that has been started gradually flowing into it has already started flowing in from uh, March, uh, in a few pools, and uh, it has continued. So that is one of the reasons why our margins have started improving. At the same time, there are uh, level margins are stable, right, on a sequential basis. Yes, so gross level margins are stable. uh if you look at the employee expenses uh that has also in absolute cost terms it has reduced but yes uh, you know a percentage basis times is a slight increase uh the savings that we have received is in terms of other expenses which is uh, more things like our logistics charges our travel costs uh those kind of things even uh, the market uh, certain other selling and expenses what we uh, give typically the incentives to the our uh, trade partners so saving has come into those areas got it sir got it thank you so much uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that management is able to address question from all the participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant next question is from the line of amarnath bakar from ministry of finance of oman please go ahead Yeah, hi sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just trying to understand the way Jockey has performed in the main section so far. Of course, this is the market leading. What is holding us back uh, to to replicate the same type of performance uh, in the women section and as well as in the kids section? Sir? We we have tried. Uh, a little bit in the early stage to do something in the kids section but it seems that that section is uh, not really picking up so can you give us some color that what the management is thinking about this women and the kids section and some some light on the speedo side as well okay excellent thanks mr amarna for asking that so in the women's category you know uh, the organized market exhibits notably very low penetration the premium side of the business where we operate 
Our current focus is not confined to safeguarding the market share. We want to actually gain market share. So, uh, we are giving a lot of emphasis on expanding penetration and capitalizing on the untapped market potential. So, we are allocating resources both through above the line and below the line in tables to foster awareness in the category. That is one of the foremost things which we need to focus on, and that's what we are doing. This concerted effort serves the dual purpose of bolstering leadership and cultivating consumer understanding regarding the women's innovative segment. We, we under observe that there is a lot of awareness that we need to create in this category, especially on the women, especially on the bra side of it, wherein we are actually converting all our associates over uh, on the retail space to be a consultant, a fit consultant and a product consultant who can prescribe the right product based on the need of our consumers. We also formed a dedicated team for women's innerwear and juniors. And I can already see this as either favorable outcomes in our go-to-market strategy. So this approach has facilitated the establishment of a distinct and dedicated distribution network and uh, it uh, and it's extending to the very last mile as far as women's innerwear and juniors are concerned. So all these moves which we are taking will help us to harness evolving premiumization trend and the transition from unorganized market to the organized player. All this will help us. And if you see our product range, we have a very rich product range. And we are blessed with a very strong research and development team. We, we have the luxury of having some world-class international talent heading the research and development team who are able to come with exciting products, very, very uh, functional, understanding the consumer's requirement, and also rightly priced. So, uh, we, we are nicely positioned where it is aspirational yet affordable for our consumers. So, you know, uh, we, we, we are paused to take off here. I think we have done all the groundwork which is necessary for us to take the business forward. So, what you said is very right. There, there should be nothing which should be stopping us. And we, we are firing on all cylinders as far as women and juniors are concerned. Coming to Speedo, Speedo has done exceedingly well in the last year. And uh, we are therefore uh, refocusing on it. In fact, we are working on a long-term business plan for Speedo with the current improvements which we are seeing. And uh, we will be focusing on further growing this category because Speedo as a market, uh, you know, in India, this is evolving and uh, there is much more awareness today and, uh, you know, th there is going to be significant uh, lifestyle improvement and uh, we are expecting this category to grow. So we will stay invested as far as Speedo is concerned. Uh, sir, of uh, a follow-up relating to that, uh, if I if I read you correctly, that means our endeavor is to uh, increase the percentage of this women and kids on revenue. Just in this regard, these products of women and kids are they at the similar margin level of the men's product, or it's substantially different? And just to add to this, sir, uh, what is our effort to extend our Beyond the India, that means, are we doing something to extend to international uh, business as well? And that's my last question. Thank you. Okay. So uh, margins uh, is similar, and as a brand, we always work that way, and it has worked very well. And what is more important is how we manage the inventory and distribution. Uh, how we can make sure he has a relevant stock at the right time and make sure it's there in the right place. He gets much inventory turns and thereby becoming more profitability rather than having more percentage points as far as margin is concerned. And this is where our focus on AR is very, very important. 
And as far as international is concerned, we have 13 overseas EBOs, 10 in UAE, one in one EBO in Sri Lanka, in, one in Qatar, and one in Oman. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amanat. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so my first question is with regards to the ad spend. Uh, you, know, you mentioned that the ad spend was around 2.4% uh, for the Q1. However, in the past, you know, in the pre-COVID times, if you see, the ad spend generally has been in the range of around 35 to 4%. Uh, so while I, I I understand you know that there is there would be a phasing issue quarter on quarter basis, uh, but what kind of targets are we seeing on expense for on a yearly basis? So um, yes. Mr. Gaurav, uh, our expense is in the range of four to four and a half percent. You know that is what we have been doing. Of course, it came down during the pandemic. It was uh, you know we were media dark, but generally it is around four to four point five percent and. Now we we are focusing on, on uh, creating those awareness both in the brand as well as all the product ranges which we have. So we are getting back to that normal trajectory as far as our uh, expense are concerned. So, sir, uh, would it be prudent to assume you know that uh, the the ad spend or these exp uh, the spends would pick up in the later half of the year? It is bound to pick up in the later half. A part of the year, but um, you know it's all part of a budget. So when I when I say we have taken enough measures to protect our margins, all these are considered. We have already baked these in our budgets, and uh, and we also taken enough initiatives to control costs on other sides of the business, so that uh, you know with the four four and a half percent marketing spend, we still can maintain and protect our margins. Uh, sure. And so the margin guidance uh, you gave, you know, that's the 19 to 21 percent, uh, that includes the other income bit as well, uh, if I'm right. Yes, it does. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it does. Sure. And so one, just one last bit question from my end is, sir, on the, uh, the, the trends, uh, you know, while we understand that during the COVID times, there was a lot of volatility in terms of demand conditions, and because of which, you know, you see, you saw last, uh, Q1 being with a very high base. Uh, but would it be prudent to assume at least that the demand conditions have now normalized and probably going ahead we could see the normalized trends and uh, therefore, you know, uh, the, these trends may follow uh, now going ahead as well. That, that, uh, definitely. You know, but when we talked about volatility, it's not only the pandemic. If you see the last four, five years, they were enough and more things happening in the marketplace which brought in a lot of volatility. You know, GST was one, then we had the pandemic, then uh, there was also, last year we also felt like, you know, the above 1,000 and below 1,000 GST correction, then it was reversed back. Um, so all this is something which has, we, we went through. So I won't say it was the pandemic, you know, and today what we are seeing is the overall bloating of inventory uh, in the industry, which is affecting all of us. So uh, going forward, I hope, you know, things will be normal. And we will be. Uh, so, sir, if I may just uh, slip in one last question. Uh, just to add, I mean, uh, yeah. in your earlier clarification, the, if it's the, the margin of 19.5, doesn't include the other income. Oh, okay, it's excluded. Okay, okay. Yeah, it excludes other income. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, uh, my uh, last question, if we could put in one more, uh, you know, it's on the pricing bit, you know, this quarter around, if you see the top line growth was, uh, decline was around 8 8% or however, you know, the volume decline was higher at around 11.5%, uh, giving, you know, a 2% kind of uh, difference. So, uh, I am assuming that we haven't taken any price increase as such for now. Uh, so, what uh, we had... So we had taken a price increase in August 2022, so that, that impact is definitely there. On top of that, there's a premiumization impact, so that's what is the gap between 11.5% regrowth and the 7.5% regrowth. Sure. Uh, 
also uh, just uh, the fact that you know, further sorry. just to further clarify uh, we don't we don't see any need for any immediate intervention we, you know we are very comfortable there will be a need for intervention only if there is some abnormal pri- uh, input cost increase like what we saw two years back if such things happen only we may have to look at it and that that is something for the industry per se to look at it but as things stand now there is no need for us to relook at and have a price intervention yeah i think that was uh, i will be last thank you sir for the clarification thank you mr chalpan thank you thank you next question is from the line of ankit kedia from philip capital please go ahead Uh, so two questions from my side uh, so when you say industry participants are pulled with inventory uh, you know once the inventory extinguishes in the system they could take price cuts because of the lower raw material and uh, you know you have a policy of not taking price cuts or uh, don't you think that uh, post the price cuts they will again be competitive and you know your products are still going to be expensive for a normal consumer uh the sankit if i look at mrp to mrp we we are still very very comfortable in fact most of our pr brands are priced much higher than us of course they have taken certain promotional activities because of the inventory yes that does play in the market but if you look at mrp to mrp we are much more competitive than most of our pr brands sure uh so my second question is you just entered into the institutional business uh last month where you are making all the ebo franchisee partners uh they are uh, you know a distributors for the institutional there you are actually told the partners that uh, the jockey logo will not be there and uh, they could scout for b2b business uh in how big is the opportunity for jockey here and will you need to pay royalty on these products given that the jockey logo or the jockey brand will not be there on these outer web products i uh, just want to clarify on this ankit uh, the jockey logo this will be dependent on the institution which is uh, which is going to look at our products uh, mostly it will be co-branded in fact what we see is most of the institutional buyers are so proud of the jockey brand that they they always prefer a co-branding yeah so that is what it is so uh, we are seeing a great opportunity this is in the sense this is one area where we are not explored even though we were present we are not actually push this we see good potential here in fact we also see this more not only from a top line point of view or the business potential this also may help us to recruit new consumers you know they for them it will be a discovery for the brand and so we we are looking at it that way as well so so from a three year perspective how big could this business be uh, from your perspective in early days the uh, sankit we are also trying to understand because as i told you we want to uh, you know sometimes we we can have a very high number at the cost of margin you know so we want to strike a good balance between it so for us we are still exploring the opportunities which uh, institutional business presents so you may have to give us the luxury of some more time to give a concrete answer on this sure uh, thank you and all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint this was the last question for the day i now hand the conference over to mr dipanjan b for the closing comments so thanks again everybody for participating in the online call uh, i think it was an interesting discussion and, and, uh, so uh, thanks again thank you On behalf of Page Industries Limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your line